ඔෆිස් එකේදි විතරක් නෙවෙයි මම දැන් ගෙදරදිත් IDD කෝස් ගන්න SLT ෆෝන් එකේ ඔබේ නිවසේ SLT දුරකථනය දැන් IDD පහසුකම සහිතයි making headlines on first at 9 developing inclement weather heavy rains experienced over most parts of the island during last 24 hours med department warns more rains for five provinces due to the influence of the convergence zone even for the next few hours we can expect uh, heavy rainfall ndro has decided to issue a early warning uh, from 3 o'clock pm onward political allegations Finance and Mass Media Minister Mangala Samaravira says not to be deceived by the statements of Rajapaksha's siblings. Warning with experience. Former President Mahinda Rajapaksha says government should pay more attention on the activities in the northern province. Provision of alternatives. Central Bank of Sri Lanka decides to permit and facilitate ETI Finance Limited to sell its holding of shares to settle the deposit. China US trade relations China and the United States vow not to launch a trade war against each other A very good evening and welcome to First at 9 I'm Katrina Chang the want your top story tonight With the onset of uh, the southwest monsoon period incidents of flooding landslides and casualties were reported across the island owing to the prevailing inclement weather condition the department of meteorology says that heavy rains are forecast to continue in the western over northwest southern and sabragamo provinces over the next 24 hours Several locations in the western, Sabaragamu, southern, central and northwestern provinces were affected by adverse weather in the past 24 hours. Several main roads in the districts of Colombo, Kaluthara and Gaul were left inundated owing to heavy rainfall experienced in these areas. Media spokesperson of the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy Sulakshana Jayawardena said that power outages were experienced in Gaul, Ambalangoda and Tulhiria due to inclement weather conditions. Two persons have been killed after being struck by lightning while working at a paddy field at F5 Ala Valikanda in Polon Narwa. Police said the deceased aged 17 and 33 were identified as residents of Magulpokuna in Valikanda. Further investigations into the incident are being carried out by Valikanda police. A woman was killed when a tree uprooted and fell atop of a house in Badal Kumbura, Monoragala, owing to heavy winds experienced in the area. The victim was a 30-year-old school teacher. Meanwhile, a tree which uprooted along Norton Bridge Hatton in Nuorelia disrupted vehicular movement in the area for a few hours. Furthermore, according to our correspondent, heavy mist was experienced in the central hills. Meanwhile a motor accident occurred in Gamangoda located in between the Dorangoda interchange in the Southern Expressway and Gelanigama. The vehicle veered off the road due to overspeeding. Four persons sustained injuries in the incident and were admitted to the Nagoda hospital for treatment. Among the injured were two children. The Road Development Authority cautioned motorists to maintain a maximum speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour when using the expressway due to the inclement weather. Meanwhile low lying areas in Neluva Gaul were inundated due to heavy rains. Residents living in the vicinity were seen moving their belongings as there was fear of possible flooding in the area. An anchor which was constructed along Andaloya in Kumaregama Ampara to prevent flooding collapsed due to incessant rain. Meanwhile the Department of Irrigation has cautioned residents residing in low lying areas beside Ging River to remain vigilant due to rising water levels these areas include divisional secretariats in badegama bopipoddala valivitiya divitura nagoda niyagama tavalama and neluva the department added that rivers of attanagaluya and kalu river in millakanda 
are at the risk of breaking its banks due to incessant rains. Therefore, they caution residents living in close proximity to these locations to be vigilant due to risk of floods. Meanwhile, speaking to First at Nine, Director of the National Building Research Organization, Arimis Bandara, says that landslide warnings have been issued to eight districts. He added that this warning, which was issued at three this afternoon, will be in effect for the next 24 hours. With the prevailing conditions of the rainfall, I think we have considered the last two, three days rainfall as the last future rainfall. After that, NDRO has decided to issue an early warning uh, from 3 o'clock p.m. onward for next 24 hours. I think we have identified Kalutara district, Kegol district, Atnapura district, Kurnayagala, Tuvarelia, Badulla, Gol and Kalambo. Uh, in Kalutara district, I think there are some divisional secretariat. I think we have given much, much consideration on these districts. At the same time, I think we have, first time we have indicated Kolam, Kalamu, Sita with the divisional secretary because it is very close to Ratnapura and Kegol hilly areas. Meanwhile, the Department of Meteorology says that more than 150 mm of rain can be expected in several areas across the island. So since yesterday night, so we get rainfall over, you know, that mostly southwestern part of Sri Lanka. So that is due to a convergence zones develop over the uh, off west of southwestern coast of Sri Lanka. So due to that, due to the influence of the convergence zone, even for the next few hours, we can expect uh, heavy rainfall, especially over the uh, southwestern part. So probably, uh, so we get heavy rainfall, more than 100 uh, rainfall. Uh, over Putlam district, uh, western province, southern province, central province, Uva province, and uh, northeastern province. Uh, Sabargama province, we will get uh, more than, uh, at some places, we will get, actually, we expect more than 150 millimeter rainfall. A religious ceremony was held at the historic Kalaniya Rajamhaviharya yesterday to invoke blessings upon war heroes who sacrificed their lives for the country. The ceremony was held under the patronage of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. A religious ceremony was organized by the Sri Lanka Army in commemoration of the war heroes who sacrificed their lives for the motherland. President Maitri Pala Sirisena arrived at the historic Kalaniya Rajamahaviharya to participate in the occasion. Many, including the State Minister of Defence Ruan Vijayvardhana and the commanders of tri forces, participated in the event. <laughs> In the meantime, an almsgiving for Mahasangha was held under the patronage of President Maitripala Sirisena yesterday. The ceremony was organized by the Mahavali Authority to invoke blessings upon the war heroes. Many members of the Mahasangha, including the Mahanayaka Thera of Uwa Udukinda, Dr. Venerable Boka Norway Jinananda Thera, and the media spokesperson of the Ramanya sector, Venerable Omalpe Sobita Thera, was present at the occasion. Other dignitaries, including the State Minister of Mahavali Development, Veera Kumar Desa Nayaka, and the Secretary to the President, Austin Fernando, too participated in the ceremony. <laughs> Former President Mahindra Raja Paksha emphasizes that paying more attention to the activities in the northern province will help the government to prevent dreadful situations in the future. The former president made this remark at an event held in Hukandara yesterday. A special Buddhist event was held at the Sambuddha Jayanti Dakshina Rama Temple in Hukandara to commemorate the war heroes. The event was held yesterday under the patronage of former president Mahindra Rajapaksa and former defense secretary Kota Bay Rajapaksa. Other Buddhians of Shal, Pradishtamiak, Darala, Attaram Kutagat, Trastavadi, Nidahas Karaganiano. Jati Vade, Atro Anat Ida Dinavana, Trastavadi in a summer under Ida Dima, sang in the Avanevi, Givita Paritagin, Elabagat Nidahasa, 
මේ පිළිබඳ අවබෝධයක් නැතිව ඉතිහාසය පිළිබඳ අවබෝධයක් නැතිව විවිධ බලවේගවල අවශ්‍යතාවයන් නිසා හෝ වෙනත් දේශපාලනික අවශ්‍යතාවයන් නිසා අපි පාවා දුන්නොත් නැවතත් අපිට ඒ වගේ යුගයක් ලැබෙන්නට ඉඩ තියෙනවා විජයග්‍රහණය තහනම් කරන්න මේ රජය කටයුතු කරා ඒක සැමරුවේ නැහැ ඒක සංවිධාවට බාධාවක් කියලා තමයි කිව්වේ හැබැයි ජන සංහාරය සතියක්ම සවරන්ට පාසල් වල පොඩි අඩකුම කරන්න අවසර ලැබුණා අද රණවිරු හිර ගිවල් වල अनागतेम Meanwhile, Minister of Finance and Mass Media Mangala Samaravira calls on the public to defeat efforts by the former president Mahinda Rajapaksha and his brothers to reclaim governing powers of the country. Minister Samaravira made these remarks by issuing a special communique today. The special communique by the Minister of Finance and Mass Media Mangala Samaravira was issued with the signature of his media secretary. Quote, Mr. Gota Bay Rajapaksa, who invented white van terror in Sri Lanka that attracted world attention, has said recently that the rulers and the public officials should be free of corruption. Gota Bay Rajapaksa, who could be considered as the most corrupted and dangerous public officer ever appointed in this country, is now talking like a child after rebirth. Several cases are being heard in courts and investigated by police against him at the moment. Instead of proving his innocence before courts against such charges that have already been leveled against him, he has retained leading lawyers to obtain anticipatory bail orders against those charges. They have been envious of this government as we were able to strengthen the local economy despite many challenges after 2015 and they have also been fabricating statistics and distorting the truth in an attempt to mislead the public. 63% debt installments to be paid this year are repayments of debts that had been borrowed during Mr Rajapaksa's tenure as finance minister. It was at the level of 75% in 2017. 48% out of the total foreign debt obtained after 2015 have been used to repay the debts that were borrowed by the Rajapaksa regime. The Rajapaksa siblings who ruled this country under such a backdrop have been attempting to regain power by throwing the people into Vyatmaga. the destructive path therefore we urge the people to defeat such attempts and rally around the government's agenda to build a strong economy and a rich country by the year 2025 unquote general secretary of the united people's freedom alliance minister mahinda amaravir states that majority of the slfp members who defected to the opposition are of the view that president maithri pala sirisena should be the party candidate for the presidential election in 2020 the minister made this remark visiting the chief prelates of the malwatta and askri chapters this morning general secretary of the united people's freedom alliance minister mahinda amaravira called on the chief prelate most venerable tibatuave shri sumangala tera this morning later he visited the chief prelate of the asgiri chapter most venerable varaka goda shri nyana ratana tera following the visit the minister expressed views to media मंत्री <laughs> The recent statement made by the cabinet course spokesperson Minister Dr Raj the Sena Ratna continued to wreak havoc as a number of protests were organized today as well in the meantime various other politicians too expressed their views in this regard 
expressing objection over the recent statement of cabinet spokesperson minister dr rajit sena ratna upfa parliamentarian pl nishant and several others held a protest march in the town of hettimulla marching towards beruvala in kalutara SLPP councillors in Polonnaruwa who represent the provincial council and councillors of the local government bodies opposed the statement made by Minister Dr Rajit Sena Ratna in the town of Hinguragudi today. Meanwhile organizing a function to commemorate war heroes foreign employees and youth collective in Chilau expressed their objection over the recent statement by minister dr raj desena ratna various other politicians to express their displeasure in this regard cabinet prakashakat kutumage prakasha e wagema e prakashe karana welawe e hitapu hamuda madhya prakashakage kriya kalapayat api hela dakino wagena karane me welawe matak karana uture palath sabawa ape vijayagrahane dina sanghara dinayak widere nam karama e gana madhya widin ahuwa me ekat o ekata kamak naha kiyala kiwama mata mage s saha kan adaha ganna beri wuna rajitha sena ratnata anuwa ltt trastawadin me rate daru minimaru trastawadin da daru hatiyata bautisma karana eka rajitha lage deshapalana kontraktu cabinet prakashak කියන දේ කියන්නේ ඒක රජයේ නිල මතය ඒක රජයේ නිල මතය නෙවෙයි නම් ඊට වඩා ඉහළ කෙනෙක් කියන්න ඕන නෑ ඒක නෙවෙයි මතය කියලා ජාතියකට ආගමකට කුලයකට වෙනස් වෙලා නැහැ රටේ ශ්‍රී ලංකාවෙන් තමයි නැති වෙලා තියෙන්නේ ඒක ආයිත ඇති නොවන විදිහට කටයුතු කිරීම අපි දේශපාලඥ සහ ජනතා සතු කාර්යභාරයක් ලෙස තමයි මම සලකන්නේ Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka in a statement today said that it will permit the ETI Finance Limited to sell its assets. The Monetary Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, having considered the critical financial conditions of the ETI Finance Limited and the possible implications to the financial system, has decided to permit and facilitate ETI Finance to sell its holding of shares in subsidiary and sub-subsidiary companies and investment properties based on a proposal submitted by the board of directors of ETI for a net amount of 75 million US dollars subject to compliance with the applicable laws and regulations having considered the request of the depositors ETI has also been instructed to pay urgently 10% of the deposit liabilities which amount to approximately 3350 million rupees and the accrued interest of 1400 million rupees approximately as at end may 2018 using the sales proceeds received the payment will commence on the 5th of next month and eti has already been told to inform its customers the way of payment Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24/7. A researcher believes that the government should openly communicate its policies prior to the implementation of agreements instead of doing so as a reactionary measure. Researchers associate of the Lakshman Khadregam Institute Divya Hundlani was speaking on criticisms surrounding the Singapore Sri Lanka free trade agreement to first at 9. Hundlani also went on to emphasize the need for a robust regulatory mechanism for trade and investment. our exporters will clearly benefit from the agreement because it increases their export market for the local consumer uh, the fta really brings in competition to the industry which really will result in lower prices for the consumer and a wider variety of goods and services available in the market overall stakeholders will benefit from agreement once it comes into full play there have been some criticisms however i do encourage people to actually read the agreement it is available online and there are clear policies against the free movement of labor from singapore to sri lanka the agreement states that there will be some level of intra corporate transfers however again these are quite restrictive there are strict time limits on this for example with trade in goods we have a very long adjustment period for exporters in sri lanka we are given a period of 15 years to uh, slowly eliminate tariffs on about 80% of our goods 
However, my main concern would be that the government should communicate these policies better and it should be done prior to the agreement uh, being signed as opposed to after when it's a more reactionary measure. Research associate of the Lakshman Kadiragamar Institute, Divya Hundlani, also emphasized the need for a robust regulatory mechanism for trade and investment in the country. Implementing an FTA really requires strong institutional capacity and we would require robust monitoring and regulation in terms of our trade and investment arenas. There have been steps taken uh, recently, for example the recent anti-dumping bill that was passed in parliament. That would be a great step in the right direction to protecting our local industries, strengthening the domestic policy environment to make the most of our agreement with Singapore. Managing Director of the Lanka Indian Oil Company, Shyam Bora, says that the company will be forced to implement its own pricing mechanism to minimize losses if the government fails to properly implement its fuel price formula. He added that it is pivotal that the automatic fuel price formula is implemented in a manner that is in the interest of all stakeholders. This week, oil prices hit 80 US dollars per barrel for the first time in four years, with analysts predicting a barrel to reach 100 US dollars over the coming months. Yesterday, however, the price of Brent crude was at $78.51, while West Texas Intermediate stood at $71 US dollars and 28 cents per barrel. It is in this backdrop the government received cabinet approval to implement an automatic fuel pricing formula on the 10th of this month in line with the expectations of the International Monetary Fund. However, according to Reuters, LIOC said the government has yet to inform the company about the new pricing formula and added it should also be transparent for the public. Lanka IOC posted a loss of 4.79 million US dollars in the year to March 31st against a 3.07 billion rupee profit in the previous year, mainly because of high global oil prices in conjunction with low retail prices for fuel. Speaking to First at Nine, Managing Director of LIOC Shambora said that if a proper pricing mechanism is in place, the company will follow it. But if it fails to do so, the company will be forced to implement its own pricing mechanism to minimize losses. Suppose it is not only for one time. After two months, again, something is going to be there based on the formula. If it is not implemented, then we will have. Otherwise, if it is implemented properly, we will follow it. Two, after two months, it will... Honorable Finance Minister mentioned that after two months the prices will be revised after every two months. So we'll see because crude is at the highest level as of now, you know. We are always, always, always we are running methodology. We don't want to implement anything which is not good. But at the same time, we need to have a proper pricing mechanism. That's what is required. Going to be in the interest of all the stakeholders, even public, even government, the companies. Shareholders, everyone should be aware about this. President of the Chamber of Construction Industry, Engineer Major Ranjit Gunatilika says that more work needs to be done to encourage new investors within the private sector to invest in the construction sector. Gunatilika went on to say that high interest rates in banks, slow process and procedures to obtain permits and visas as well as ineffective partnership between the private and public sector discourage local investors to develop the industry. He expressed these views at the opening ceremony of Bill Sri Lanka 2018 held in Colombo recently. Today, if someone asks me what is the best business venture in this Sri Lanka, I have to think twice. With the present bank interest, we always feel the local investors got to think twice. For a project of two years, minimum, or three years, at the percent rate, unless you have about 40-45% return on your capital, right? I know the bank people are here, but sorry to say, that is the situation that no one is going to invest. Because that investment is taken back at a risk. The procedures, permits that we have to take in this country when you try to do the development, is really discouraging. There is no following up authorities here. Once you apply for an application or permit, when are we going to get? We have talked about a lot of private sector, public sector partnerships. This is, I think, at the moment, is very limited. 
I have not seen affecting construction industry, public sector and private sector. And also, once it's limited the construction sector working in this country, we have been asked by Export Development Board and other authorities in the government to go out and do our services. For certain negotiations, when we were asked to come to various countries, we take more than two weeks, three weeks to get simply the visas, which discourage even getting the job. Stock market analysts say that the Colombo boards can expect local buying interest and turnover levels to remain moderate over the course of the week. During the week, the Osha price index gained 0.20%, while the S&P SL20 increased by 0.18%. Let's now cross over to Archidan Srirangan from First Capital Holdings with their market forecasts for the upcoming week. We expect the market sentiment to improve with the quarterly earnings are, that are being released. Local buying interest and overall turnover levels are like to be remain moderate. Adapting a wait and see approach as a, in investors are looking out for the proper direction in the index after the fuel pricing hike affecting some listed counters. However, foreigners are like to be active premium driven by the bargain hunting counters. Despite lower volume, we expect Activity dominated by the blue chips counter. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. On to one of our headline-making news now, China and the United States issued a joint statement on economic and trade consultations, vowing not to launch a trade war against each other. The statement had been issued yesterday under the directives of Chinese President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Donald Trump. The special joint statement by China and U.S. said that based on the directives of Chinese President Xi Jinping, and U.S. President Donald Trump, delegations of the two countries had conducted constructive consultations on trade issues on Thursday and Friday. The Chinese delegation was led by President Xi's special envoy and Vice Premier Liu He, and the U.S. officials included Treasury Secretary Stephen Nushin, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross and Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer. Liu arrived in Washington on Tuesday last week at the invitation of the U.S. government. The two sides had agreed to take effective measures to substantially decrease the U.S. trade deficit in goods with China. China had agreed to significantly increase its purchase of U.S. goods and services to meet the consumption needs of the Chinese people. The two nations had also come into terms to meaningfully increase the export of U.S. agriculture and energy products. The two sides had also agreed to encourage the two-way investment and committed to creating a business environment for fair competition. The statement went on to emphasize that the two sides highly valued intellectual property protection and agreed to promote cooperation in this regard. The Trump administration has taken a hard line against China since the president took office and the United States had made a series of moves focused on trade, including threatening tariffs on Chinese products and restrictions on Chinese investment flowing into the country. China too immediately reacted by banning of hundreds of US imports to the country. Recently, however, both countries have shown willingness to compromise to reduce trade tensions. The first serious injury has been reported as Hawaii continues to grapple with weeks of volcanic eruptions and lava flow. Two weeks after fountain of lava and poisonous gas from Hawaii's Kilawe volcano forced hundreds of people to flee their homes in the middle of the night, things were only getting worse for residents. The first serious injury was reported in Hawaii due to Kilauea volcanic eruptions when a man was sitting on a balcony at his home when lava spatter or projectile molten rock landed on him. A spokeswoman for the county mayor said it shattered bones on his leg as lava spatters can weigh as much as a refrigerator. The Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's big island erupted at the beginning of May and the situation for residents has steadily been worsening. Yesterday, a key coastal road used as a main escape route for residents was in danger of being cut off, which could hamper evacuations. The possibility of the lava flows reaching the ocean meanwhile threatens to release toxic gases in a plume called a laze. The US Geological Survey says when molten lava hits seawater, the chemical reaction can create hazy and noxious conditions laced with hydrochloric acid and tiny particles of glass. 
Geologists say it remains unlikely Kilauea will have a massive eruption like that of 1790, which killed over 400 people. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Therana 24-7. Sheila Fernando is your other, at your other Derina Weather Center with your forecast first evening edition. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures for tomorrow are to vary between 21 and 31 degrees Celsius, with the highest temperatures recorded in Jaffna and Muletivu. Well, when looking at the map, a low pressure zone is set to develop along the coastal belt from Manar to Gaul over the next 24 hours. As for rain, all parts of the country is set to experience showers, with many more areas including Jaffna, Mana, Waunia, Kandy, Kalambo and Gaul likely to be hit with heavy falls accompanied by some thunder activity. That's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast. And before we go tonight, we'd like to take you back to the royal wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, a wedding that is regarded as a cultural revolution. A black gospel choir, black British musicians and African-American bishop changed the wedding traditions of the British monarchy. It's safe to say that the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle was the most...